and result or res the right result in that way is something you uh, can't complain about at all. And well, yeah, for me, if you're pep, I was gonna say, if you're pep, you don't need to focus on the ruthlessness, but more your fashion sense. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Off the Crossbar podcast with myself, Regan Walsh, and as always, my co-presenter, Bradley Morris. How are you on this lovely Thursday afternoon, Brad? I'm doing very well. So I'm intrigued to see how this goes because chances are this podcast is going to last longer than England batting against India. I mean, they've already finished that game. We wouldn't be surprised if the game's finished by the time we uh, wrap up here, but... Um, we are a football podcast, not cricket, so we've had some midweek action once again in the Champions League. On Tuesday of this week, Atletico Madrid hosted Chelsea. Well, I say hosted, it wasn't in uh, the Wanda Metropolitano, is at the National Arena in Bucharest, was it? Romania? Bucharest, Bucharest is in Romania, but I don't remember where it was they said they were hosting. Yes. Um, Either way, it was Thomas Tuchel's side that ran out 1-0 winners thanks to a lovely overhead kick goal by Olivier Giroud to give them the first leg advantage. Um, great performance from Chelsea to get that win and what a goal it was as well by Olivier Giroud. Yeah, Giroud and his lustrous looks. <laughs> came, just, just came for him. Although Atletico, Jesus Christ, that was every every stereotype of that team that we all know about. <laughs> yeah, just ultra defensive, park the bus, didn't really do much in terms of going forward and it was six two <laughs> to was the formation. Yeah. It was, it really wasn't entertaining to see it all like from an athletic standpoint. I mean, they usually play some decent football and can get results, but on Tuesday they didn't look like they were gonna even uh, fret the Chelsea goal too much. No. Yeah. Um, I mean, the fact that Olivier Giroud, like, he, for me, I think he's massively underrated. Like, he doesn't do it often, like scoring and that, but he's an actual quality striker f for me. He plays his role perfectly, in a way, yeah. but... I thought we did have this discussion, but it feels like he, well, he's underrated in terms of the top world strikers. Mm. He is getting that recognition now. He just turns yeah. up in the big game. Oh, hundred percent. And for me, he's, he's. I don't know whether I said it before, but he's quite similar to Dimitar Berbatov in the fact that he doesn't do much in his game, but he will always score when it's needed to, and. Berbatov, Giroud, there is the very similar comparisons in the way they play. It's not very, it's not the best, and it's not the most attractive style of play compared to the younger strikers. But he does what is needed of him. See, I would argue Berbatov. He is probably that one footballer who, who probably looked like the most that he couldn't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, but if that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, oh, 100%. But when you see his first touch, oh, yeah. <laughs> you can be as lazy as you want if you've want to. If you got such a great first touch, that man. And two games are always spring to mind with Berbatov. West Ham, when he does that spin on the uh, byline just before it goes out to set up Ronaldo. And then the hat-trick against Liverpool. Yeah, there's one against Villa he did for Fulham. Yeah. I don't remember. I think mean, just yeah, but yeah, but yeah, Giroud. I think he's finally just getting the credit that he deserves. Again, Thomas Tuchel side, really good run of form now, uh, under Tuchel. Um, it is quite surprising how long this has lasted. I think for me, um, I don't know if I was really expecting them to go this long undefeated under him, 
you never know that might come a crop this weekend as they have a hard fixture against Manchester United, which we'll talk a little bit later on. Yes. But yeah, it's very yeah. There's just one I think that all the Chelsea fans now they're saying Frank who? Exactly. It definitely seems to be um, a new fire lit in that Chelsea squad under Thomas to compare to what it was looking like under Frank Lampard over the last month of his tenure. Um, not good result for Atleti, as we said, but it's been a bad week for them because we said they lost at the weekend to Levante 2-0. They drew with them a few days prior in the league 1-1. One, one. They've lost this one. I mean... There was talk that Atleti could go the whole La Liga season on Beeson, but that's obviously not happening anymore. It's Are they slowly becoming too much for themselves in the sense like they believe their own hype too much and teams are figuring them out, do you reckon? Potentially. I haven't seen enough of them to go fully in depth on it, but it would take a lot for them to lose the points gap that they've now accumulated in La Liga. It's only three point. I mean, they've got a game in hand, like we said previously, over Real Madrid and Barcelona. It was it's still only three points. It was points. a lot more than that. It was. It was. It was massive at one stage, and we were, and we were think. Well, I know I certainly was thinking they could all be wrapped up quite early on for Atleti, like March, April time. But <laughs> Real Madrid have turned their season around, and Atleti goes has gone in reverse. Elsewhere on Tuesday, the other game took place between Lazio and Bayern Munich. And it was Bayern Munich that ran out 4-1 winners. Robert Lewandowski, Jamal Musiala, Leroy Sane and an own goal from Francesco Acerbi gave uh, Hansi Flickside a comfortable 4-1 lead headed into the second leg. Uh, Joaquin Correa did score for Lazio. I mean... He celebrated that one of it. <laughs> yes. I mean, Bayern Munich are just too good in the Champions League one. Oh, yeah. Look, it, it was over the second they went 1 0 up. Yeah, as soon as Lewandowski scored that early, I was like, this is going to be a long evening for Lazio. And then uh, Musiala scored a second, a very promising young talent. Unfortunately, for Inter fans, he's pledged his allegiance to Germany now. Yeah, screw it. <laughs> <laughs> to me, um, I mean, he makes sense because he knows he's got more chance of winning a trophy with Germany than England. Has it? Yes, I think Germany will be more likely to win a trophy closer than England will. Um, but yeah, comfortable victory. Don't really for phone, I don't need him. <laughs> um, they did put up a fight, uh, um, Lazio, but. I think, like we said, you score the, that early on, I think it's always going to be hard to stop uh, Bayern from scoring once they score one. It's very hard for teams to do that, but mm. credit where credit you, they got the job done and got a comfortable 4-1 lead, so you got to say they're definitely one step into the quarterfinals. Then on Wednesday, the first match took place between Atalanta and Real Madrid, and Atalanta had to play the majority of the game with 10 men after Remo Frula was sent off after 17 minutes. However, it took Real Madrid until the 86th minute to score past Atalanta when Ferland Mendy scored for Zinedine Zidane's side. Now, considering how early they went behind, they did really have stopping Real Madrid from scoring 100 or odd goals. Yeah, I feel better about going behind only 1-0 because you did still give mm. them a slight chance they're not no, they didn't lose this badly no I mean obviously they got dominated in terms of possession and shots they went down to 10 men which is obviously going to be the way because Real Madrid have obviously had more outfield players so it's easier to play the ball around but yeah a 1-0 result they'll have Considering the circumstances they put themselves in that early on, they will 100% take that into the second leg and have confidence that they can possibly get a goal or two away from home and potentially go through on away goals. So definitely not something to write them out about. Um, and then the final game took place as well 
of the first set of fixtures and the round of 16 at the Pushkash Arena between Borussia Mönchengladbach and Manchester City. And it was Pep Guardiola's side that won 2-0 thanks to a Bernardo Silva goal and Gabriel Jesus with the winner. Comfortable victory, you got to say, for City. Oh, they should be. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the squad's good enough. It's now up to 19 unbeaten in all competitions, is it? Was it yeah. 20? It's 19. Oh, plus caps. Mm. I know Pep Guardiola was saying he wanted his side to be more ruthless in that game and score more goals, but a result or a, the right result in that way is something you uh, can't complain about at all. And well, yeah, for me, if you're Pep, I was gonna say, if you're Pep, you don't need to focus on the ruthlessness, but more your fashion sense. <laughs> yes, that did seem to be a big talking point of uh, the game. Or uh, not the actual fixture itself was Pep Guardiola's uh, coat that he had on, which uh, was a black long jacket, not the style of Arsene Wenger. Oh, not that style coat type. What Arsene Wenger or Pep's? No, it's not in Arsene Wenger. But it was more. He was like early Jose, early Jose, early Jose. Like Jose used to wear back in the day. Yeah. Even well, Fergie um, used to wear them, like, think... the like posh long coats. Yeah. I do actually quite like them myself. Well, uh, just not they've got a big massive back of like plastic looking badge on the back of it. Yeah, it's not really everyone's cup of tea. Though, like I said to you pre-recording, um, PSG had something quite similar, not as long, but um, with their badge on the back. And I think the PSG one looked nice, but Pep, meh. Obviously, I wouldn't wear it because I'm not a Man City fan, but it's just looked like something that had just been stuck on that was the problem it didn't look right yeah i think it's the effect that the badge had like the type of i don't know what the right word in for that is but was it just a metaphor City badge was made out was it just a metaphor for the target on his back yeah it must be well uh yeah definitely not the most attractive of things but yeah they got the result they needed um, the second legs of these will be played. The, you know, the so these games that were played this week will played on will be played on the 16th and 17th of March. With the games that were played on Wednesday played on the Tuesday, and the games played on Tuesday being played on the Wednesday. And same for the other set of legs, which will be played the 9th and 10th of March. Right, on to the Premier League now, and we have uh, a full fleet of fixtures to look forward to this weekend. Uh, But before we get on to that, there was some news after our show uh, on Monday that uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced that 10,000 fans could attend sporting events from the 17th of May, which would be in time for the last weekend of Premier League fixtures. So what are your thoughts on that news? Ten thousand people in Villa Park. <laughs> oh, and it'd be nice, wouldn't it? But you know, everyone, stay and stay safe. Wear your masks. Mm. We need the fans back in. Um, I think it's good to get so the teams like financially wise, but I mean, you literally they're going to be there for one game and then disappear again for another six weeks or so because fans aren't going to be there until the start of the season unless fans go to pre-season games and we don't know what pre-season is going to be like this year because we've got the Euros to come and then the Olympics after that as well so you don't know what teams are going to do for pre-season and what travel is available to teams because obviously not every country is doing uh, has uh, vaccinated as many people as the United Kingdom has so it could be one where Teams don't go on pre-season tour as they usually do. Um, but again, mm, I, it, it's one of them. Like I said before, I'm excited for fans to be back, but I think it would make more sense if they said, "Right, the summer, the Euros, yeah, fans can attend to, but just the start of next season, fans can return at, at full capacity at all levels, rather than just." All 90 minutes of the Premier League level makes no sense. Apart from money. Your problem is, your problem is that you're a realist and you're not trying to imagine the good life. 
<laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I, I could drive, <laughs> don't I? <laughs> yeah. If if the opportunity arose for me to attend the then final games of the season or the FA Cup or what a playoffs, what have you, then obviously I'd bite your hand off. But I'm being a realist, and I just I don't see it happening anytime soon. Believe but, it when we see it. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Uh, on to the Premier League fixtures now. As we said, we've got a full fleet of fixtures. Um, Saturday afternoon is quite an interesting game at the Etihad Stadium between Manchester City and West Ham United. Two teams in good form, which is really surprising to say. It's a top four clash, which is even more surprising to say. Um, Man City, obviously, as we said, on a 19 match on beaten run, 10 points clear at the top, whilst West Ham are up to fourth place after their victory last week on 45 points. What are your thoughts on this game? Give David Moyes a knighthood if he's the one that ends the streak. Oh my God, if David Moyes ends Pep Guardiola's streak, Man United fans are going to go absolutely crazy. Oh my God, that is... Well, it really would be incredible if it is David Moyes' West Ham side to break the run. But and and the winner, uh, the winner scored by Mr. Jesse Lingard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that really would be interesting. Um, the only bit of team news I know about this is Man City will have Sergio Aguero back as he came uh, off the bench for them in their Champions League game, which was his first game back since. January, as he's missed a lot of game time due to having uh, contracted coronavirus. Um, West Ham injury front, I don't know if there's been any news from uh, David Moore. I forgot who it was for a split second then um, on their injury front. But yeah, it's going to be a very interesting game. <sighs> Though I do, for me, I do see City winning that. Uh, then at three o'clock again, not really the most entertaining. The three o'clock kickoff, it's uh, Brighton versus West Bromwich Albion at the Hawthorns. I mean, it is technically a relegation six points, uh, especially with the way Fulham are going. But I think a draw or like a one nil scoreline is what I expect from this. It's weird with Brighton, isn't it? They're doing everything right except for their shooting boots. Mm. Because, I mean, their game against Palace the other day, on May, which finished 2-1 to Palace, which uh, was in our Vixens League, so they both got wrong there. Um, they've had just four shots against Crystal Palace in both games this season, compared to Palace... Sorry, they've had 45 shots. I was going to say that, <laughs> Compared to Crystal Palace's four, Brighton have you been watching? <laughs> yes, sorry. Um, so, yeah, look, like we said they can't find their shooting boot this season, and score finding the back of the net has been a struggle. I mean, they've only scored twenty six goals this season. Uh, only the teams below them and Burnley have scored less than them in the Premier League. But uh, I don't know what. I th- How do you see this one going for me? It wouldn't even surprise me if Albion snuck a victory away. This is how Brighton have been recently. Yeah. I understand where you're coming from. It's one of them, you know, like, you wouldn't be surprised if you saw West Brom win it, but at the same time, a draw, again, you'd be like, okay, yeah, not the two best sides, not most entertaining sides, they just cancel each other out. Then the next fixture at half past five is at Elland Road, where Leeds United take on your Aston Villa side. Um, how are you feeling about this? Shitting one? myself. <laughs> Look what they did to us when we had our best player. What could they possibly do <laughs> in this one? Yeah, it could absolutely be a goal fest this game. I mean, like we said, Leeds always seem to score goals and also concede. But um, on some match facts here, Leeds are looking to complete their first league double over Aston Villa since the 1975-76 campaign following their 3-0 win at Villa Park earlier this season. And Villa have just won two of their last 17 away games against Leeds, drawing nine, losing the other six, with those victories coming in January and December of 2000. 
So 21 years ago since you last won at Elland Road, not really the best of places to go for Villa. And with the injuries, as we said, to Jack Grealish and Matty Cash was the other injury? Yes. Um, it's not really the best of times for Villa to be visiting there, but you never know, an upset could be. Oh, I don't even know, would that be an upset Villa winning there? I mean, it would break the curse, obviously, I said 20 years without a win there, but... Yeah, technically it wouldn't be a shock. Mm. Like, but I would com- I'd be surprised. That's like a draw, with the way things are. <laughs> and to round off Saturday's fixtures, at 8 o'clock we have Steve Bruce's Newcastle United taking on Nuno Espirito Santos, Wolverhampton Wanderers from St. James's Park. Um, I think this has got the potential to be a good game. Both teams not really in the best of forms. Uh, I mean, Newcastle have lost their last two games whilst Wolverhampton Wanderers. They've won their last two games, but they had a little blip earlier on in the season. I mean, Raul Jimenez has been back in training uh, this week with Wolf, though there's obviously... No rush on him being uh, included straight to their starting 11. So you never know, you might see him on the bench this weekend or maybe uh, next week. Well, that should be good news where Newcastle, I don't know if, in, or as far as I'm aware, like we said, Callum Wilson's out for a while and so are a lot of their other injuries. But I think Wolves might just sneak this one. What was a sneak of victory to Newcastle? I think it's going to be a lot closer than people think. It's a bit of uh, Steve Bruce football genius, but <laughs> what should smash them? I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm not too sure they will do. It'd be typical of this season, but mm. we're being realistic. Oh, 100%. Right, on to Sunday fixtures now, and the early kickoff is a London derby, just about. Uh, sees Crystal Palace play host to Scott Parker's Fulham at midday. Um, I think Palace should comfortably win this one, though Fulham, like we said in uh, a Monday show, they are slowly picking up form and could put up a real fight against Palace. It wouldn't surprise me if Palace just didn't turn up in this one. Mm. He would be a typical Palace. They go be bright and play excellently and then they just don't show up against Fulham. It would be typical Palace. Then uh, the other 12 o'clock kickoff is at the King Power Stadium as Leicester City play host to Mikel Arteta's Arsenal. Um, gonna be. I think this could be a really close game. Obviously, uh, Leicester have had got their injuries. Arsenal, well, you never know what type of Arsenal are going to turn up. For me, oh, I think this could be quite close because, I mean, the f- reverse fixture back in October only finished 1-0 to Leicester and that was Jamie Vardy in the 80th minute. Uh, but I think this game could potentially have a similar outcome to it. Potentially, it depends on A, what Arsenal turn up, and B, what Leicester turn up. Like, Madison yeah. will be a miss for him if he does still yeah. remain out. With... Yeah, I think he's met, set, missed uh, three to four weeks with a hip injury. Yeah. Again, as we said, the first point, what Arsenal will show up. Mm. It depends on how both teams cope after their Europa League fixtures tonight. I mean, Arsenal, you'd expect maybe to rest some players because I believe, aren't they practically already... F- oh, no, they're 1-1 one, one on their time. I thought, I thought they won. So, yeah, Arsenal were, uh, are going to be cautious with their game tonight against them, because against uh, Braga, as it's still close. And obviously, Leicester, Slavia, Prague is 0-0. Yeah. You said Arsenal Braga. Bambica. Did I? You said wrong Portuguese. <laughs> Sorry, wrong Portuguese side there. Uh, Benfica, Arsenal you've is read, 1-1. You've and read Leicester. Benfica and then just said Braga. Yeah, and Leicester versus uh, Slavia Prague is 0-0. Uh, 
That's your care uh, for the so, Europa League. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, so both teams still have a lot to play for uh, tonight. And you never know, the layover onto Sunday could still happen. Then the two o'clock fixture we have is from the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium as Jose Mourinho's Tottenham welcome Sean Dyche's Burnley to London. Um, Spurs played last night in the Europa League against... Who did Spurs play last Ooh, night? Spurger. Yes, Wolfsburger, that was it. Uh, easy victory for them, you got to say. Uh, Classic goal from Deli Alley. Uh, <laughs> with the overhead kick as well. Um, they finished 4 0 winners and 1 8 1 on aggregate. But again, I, I just don't know what Spurs are going to show up to this game against Burnley. Because... So, how's this going to work? Which one of them is actually going to attack? <laughs> Whoever the referee is for this game, he's going to be the one that does the most attacking. Yeah. If you're talking about it, how on earth do you not play Son on the left, Ali in the middle, Bale on the right, Kane up top? You would think so, but... Bale has started to finally show signs. Yeah, and he's performed quite decently over the last I'll couple of games. No low quality of opposition. <laughs> yeah, but you only do perform against well against what's thrown in front of you, can't you? I mean... If uh, it's anybody else in front of him, he might not perform so good, but you never know uh, with who it is against. He can't change that. I'm just going to have a quick look now as to who they've got for referee in this game. Um, Mike Dane, Mike Dane, Mike Dane, Mike Dane. <laughs> It is Kevin Friend. Oh, fuck. Uh, Mike Dean's doing Newcastle Wolves on Saturday night. He's going to miss me, Steve Bruce, football genius. <laughs> um, yeah, so elsewhere on Sunday, the game after that in the Premier League, I believe, is the big one at 4.30 at Stamford Bridge. Thomas Tuchel versus Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as Chelsea take on Manchester United. Um, I think this is, this is the first real league test, you could say. For Thomas Tuchel, for him yes, but if Solskjaer, if Solskjaer doesn't win this, is he back down to fraud watch? No, for for me he isn't. I mean, he's doing a good enough job, and he, I can't fault him for like second. The Man City are just in the league of their own this season, so he's you doing could, everything. You could also argue him. United have been a massive reason why. And themselves while they've slipped away. Yeah, there have been hit and miss over the last few weeks. At you times can't, you can't be losing to Sheffield United when you're in a title race. Yeah, but like we said on the podcast the day after, uh, a couple of days after, the referee said uh, the one Sheffield United goal shouldn't have stood and the one Man United goal should have stood. So, in theory, it's not really down to United for that fixture it was the referees getting their it's not down to United wrong. in terms of the goals but the performance was shocking oh yeah the performance was bad and it should be able to beat at Sheffield United anyway considering how bad Sheffield United have been obviously despite the refereeing decisions but yeah going into this one I wouldn't be surprised if it's a draw or I'll decide to get a really late winner. I don't expect many goals in this one. It's the half or kick off. It's ending now, now. <laughs> and then the final kick off on Sunday takes place at Bramall Lane and Sheffield United take on injury FC. Sorry, Liverpool FC at quarter past seven. Uh, apparently, Jordan Henderson is set to miss 12 weeks with his uh, injury. Is anyone so that's even more blunt. <laughs> no, <laughs> literally, they've got no one left. Okay, um, every other player's got injured except for the main front three. <laughs> did Selena get injured earlier on this season? I feel like he, I feel like he hasn't. No. I thought I thought it was only Mane and Firmino that haven't missed games. I thought Salah missed maybe like one or two at the start of the season. I can't remember. It's been that long. Okay. Um, um, you gotta say, even with the injuries. This 
Liverpool team should beat Sheffield United. They should do. Whether they Whether actually they do or be. not. Here's another Here's question. Another question. I mean, if Liverpool lose this game, I, 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 I don't know even know what to say. The Titanic is sinking. <laughs> Will have already sunk, let alone sinking. It would have sunk uh, if they lose this one. And then to wrap up the weekend's fixtures on Monday night, takes place at Goodison Park as Everton welcome Ralph Hatton, who, Hassan Hootles Southampton up north which is not a nice trip I can tell you that much because I've done it once and I'm never doing it again from Southampton to Everton. Yeah, Everton's a lovely place. I don't know I didn't see much of it I only went to the stadium but it's the longest journey from the south coast I can tell you that much on a Monday night as well I'm glad there's no fans there because I really would feel sorry for them. Everton obviously come into this no, one on the back of a. No, but it, it's a long journey it's at eight o'clock at night as well. Uh, so obviously Everton come into this game on the back of their Merseyside derby win two 0 while Southampton are in dreadful league form, uh, on the back of losing three 0 to Leeds United in midweek. Um, you got to say, I think Everton win this quite comfortably. You'd think so based on Southampton's obviously poor current run. Yeah. But they showed signs against Chelsea, wherever they do that again. But again, Everton have got to turn up and you'd think they would. Yeah, 100%. Right. If, uh, if, if we can know. actually add, because they obviously, Everton obviously unveiled their new stadium. This week, I want to talk on that. Well, not on it because it's been around for a while, but they oh, yeah, I meant got that. some sort of permission for it at the Bramley Moor Docklands or whatever the fuck it's called. I can't remember. It's just something so beautiful about a stadium by the just by the coast. It? <laughs> yeah, it does look quite nice. Like that and nice would look beautiful. Yeah, I think it will do. But again. It's the journey up there for any fan. It's, it's a trick and a half. Um, yeah, it does look a really nice stadium, and hopefully, it gets uh, the final go, go ahead and should be able to be completed within the next four or five years, I believe. And it's set to be a fifty-four thousand capacity stadium, which is uh, good news because their current stadium is uh, quite compact and tight. Right, uh, uh, that was. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. Though. It's yes, very yes. tight I'm and cold. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll hand over to you now for the predictions league. Because oh. you said you chose the Premier League games this week. Yeah. So do you want me to run off? So I'll now? let you do that, Frank. I'll go through the wild cards. Okay, so as we said, we had Brighton versus Palace uh, from last week. We both got wrong. So the three Premier League games Tom I've gone you, with. Christian Benz, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, to them, I would say are quite Sorry, obvious. Chris, I still love you. <laughs> <laughs> and the first one being Leicester City versus Arsenal. Uh, for that one, I'm going to go Leicester to win 2-1. I will also go 2 1 Leicester. Okay. Next game is the 4 30 kickoff between Chelsea and Manchester United on Sunday. And for me, I'm going to go Man United to win 1 0. It's going to be 1 0 Chelsea. Okay. And then the final Premier League game I've gone for this week is at St James's Park as Newcastle take on Wolverhampton Wanderers. Um, I'll go first and I'm going to go 1-0 Newcastle you've backed the genius yes well I don't have that level of faith I'll go 2-0 Wolves ok you've just pulled a face at me <laughs> what was I have? <laughs> uh, not because of your predictions I've just seen uh, what game is tomorrow night in the championship Derby between Derby and Nottingham Forest. 
Yeah, we would go to that yeah, at the later stage of the, se- of the season when the championship really hots up. Yes. Uh, so your three wildcard games, please. Yeah. Wildcards. Another strong week, I'd say, for the European Very features. strong. First choice, I have Sevilla against Barcelona. Uh, Sevilla at home, aren't they? If I remember correctly. It is. Uh, oh, I just... I think Sevilla win this 2-1. I disagree again. Actually, I'll go 2-all draw. Okay. Game 5. Syria or Roma versus AC Milan. Uh, I think... It's going to be a close one, but I think AC win it 1-0, AC Milan. Yeah. Shamed. Last week by their rivals, they're out for blood. Mm. So I think they win 2-1. Okay, and game number six? A real French battle between Marseille and Lyon. I had a feeling you'd do this one. Um, I think Leon win this quite comfortably, and I'm going to go with three-one to Leon. Is this the first game of Marseille under San Paoli? No, he's Isn't not officially it? there but yet. It's still a pretty big fixture. If you see what San Paoli was like, the last big fixture he was just involved in. <laughs> exactly. Two-nil, uh, Leon. Okay. So that is the Predictions League. A reminder that Brad's on 70 points, I'm on 97, hidden into this weekend's fixture. So hopefully I can break the 100 100 point barrier. Right. Now, um, it's been international week in the world of women's football. Uh, There was the She Believes Cup over from Friday, uh, Sunday and Wednesday night, with the USA retaining it for the second time after winning all three of their games, including beating Argentina 6-0 last night with Megan Rapinoe scoring a brace, Carly Lloyd, uh, Kristen Press, Alex Morgan, and I've forgotten who the other goal scorer was. Uh, but yes, the USA have retained that title, which is no surprise there considering their incredible form. Then for the European Championship qualifiers, so the Euros are being held in 2022. Teams that have qualified over this international break are Spain, Finland, Austria and Italy, who qualified on Wednesday night. And then, uh, because that's now all the group stages done, the team, three team, or the six teams that will go into the playoffs are Czech Republic, Northern Ireland, Portugal, Russia, Switzerland and the Ukraine and the draw will be made next week on the 5th of March with the leg, first and second legs being played between the 5th and 13th of April. Now England played their first game under manager Hegarisa on Tuesday afternoon and they beat Northern Ireland 6-0 thanks to Ellen White scoring a hat-trick, Lucy Bronze Rachel Daly and a debut penalty from Ella Toon. And she also handed debuts to Sandy McGeever, Ebony Salmon and Lotta Vubben Moy in the second half. And we have some WSL fixtures to look forward to this weekend. All three, three games on Sunday at 2 o'clock. First up is Tottenham versus Everton, which is going to be a cracker of a game. Uh, Tottenham are starting to look in decent form in the WSL and Everton are really good and have been a standout side for me this season then we have Aston Villa versus Arsenal which is the four Tank times four. this fixture is trying to be played Tank four. Oh, and I'm praying to God this fixture actually gets played this weekend the weather I'm looks nice this weekend to happen. so hopefully we do actually get it played on um, it would be interesting to see COVID test that comes back positive oh, that will be the second time COVID ruined this game. As that was the first reason this game got called off and then the other two were due to the weather. Uh, so it sees two friends go up against each other as Manu Iwabuchi takes on Viviana Miedemar in that fixture. Both are friends from their time at Bayern Munich together. And Manu then the final game... Miedemar. Shut up, Dan, basically. <laughs> and then the final game sees... Dan, the Miedemar stands on the Exactly. 
uh, and then Birmingham City play Manchester City um, at the sportsbet.io stadium or whatever their stadium's called now. I can't think of it, Birmingham City, but um, Manchester City should easily win that game. I don't want to write off Carl Ward's side because they're doing okay, obviously not in relegation trouble just yet, but uh, Man City are in phenomenal form. So I'd expect them to easily win that. Mm. Right, that's all the women's football talk. Um, Anything else we've missed? Did you not want to talk about that rumoured Euro news? Ah, yes. Um, So according to being sport um the euros in this summer are set to be held solely in england uh with fans obviously being able to attend because it, it as it's the 60th anniversary uh when the tournament was or well, this tournament still is the 60th anniversary uh it's meant to be held across 12 cities but due to the ongoing pandemic it was obviously pushed back a year and they are reporting that england will now be the neutral venue for it say it's having teams traveling around the Europe. It's not a problem with that. Though. What? It's foreign fans coming over. Yeah. I feel like that may not be allowed. Mm. And um, some other news that's just been breaking. According to The Athletic, this is an exclusive within the last 10 minutes. They're saying the Premier League's 37th round could be moved back so fans can attend. So they are now saying the fans can attend the final two games, possibly, if this game is moved. But that second last weekend is moved back. Well, they're only doing to, that because uh, we know the right reason they're doing that. Money. No, it's so both... So every club gets to have the fans back in for at least one game. Yeah, but what about if your team your teams won two games or away? Well, they didn't think about that, did they? Exactly. You you didn't think about that? Was, let me just have a look. Well, I, think, I, I, I sort of knew that would be a reason, but that would it's probably not something that they've taken fully into consideration. Um, just this point, just, no, it's just a, oh, one game. Just accept it. Yeah, though it does seem like it all yes, so. I'm quick look of it now. It does seem to be actually every team will get to play one game at home and one game away. So that could be some positive be news if fans, yeah, if fans are allowed in there, which I don't know whether it will happen. Um, right. So good enough show today. I think it's 40 minutes or so. Mm-hmm. And we will be back at the start of next week to round up uh, the weekend's action and any of the big talking points from around the world of football. Um, oh, yes, one bit of news we forgot to mention. Celtic manager, or then Celtic manager, Neil, Rennan, Neil Lennon, even, not Neil Rennan, Neil Lennon has resigned the club 18 points off second place, uh, first place Do you want- Rangers. Sorry. You mentioned, do you want me to add the tumbleweed sound effect back in? <laughs> no. <laughs> but that's it. Um, and nothing has happened. We'll be speak of any more stories that happen over the weekend, obviously, on our show on Monday. Until then, enjoy your weekend. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. And with the Women's Euro stuff, we'll leave uh, something in the description box to... Uh, register your interest for priority sales uh, when they go on sale with the tournament starting in less than 500 days now until then enjoy your weekend we'll see you next week and it's goodbye from me and goodbye from my co-presenter brad please wear your masks oh, we need the fans back in and we'll see you soon <laughs>